Hi everyone and welcome to this new series with me Luke Bridger where we'll be looking at the fundamentals of animating for game engines. In this first video we're going to be creating animations for a door using the principle of a bouncing ball. The first step in this is going to be creating reference footage and converting it to a format that is usable in Blender. So let's dive into it. So to get started today, one of the first things we need to talk about before even getting animating is reference. Now, it's really important to always be using reference when working, especially with animation. And one of the things that a lot of people don't really know about Blender is you can actually edit video in here as well. So it's quite useful for that. So um, one of the first things I recommend doing is going and looking online and finding some reference footage of doors opening and closing. I know that sounds quite dumb but at the same time there's no substitute for animating to reference basically okay so um i've already got some reference footage files so if i just go to my reference folder i've got some videos that i've already got ready here i'm just gonna go back to blender and just go to file new and video editing here so if i click on that don't worry about saving changes. Okay, and now just to introduce you to the video interface over here on the left is where you browse to your video files. And then over here in the middle is where you will edit your video. And over to the right here. Now this is one of the things that really bugs me about uh, the latest version of Blender is this window docks. So you have to scroll here and I don't like that. Um, the older version of Blender um, used to have it so it was docked all the way down here, so you didn't have to scroll. Um, but regardless, all your information is still here and you just uh, use your mouse wheel to scroll up and down. And this is where you set the format settings for your video sequence that you're editing and your output settings. So just to get started, so if I just bring the path I'm gonna use for my reference and just paste that in there. Okay, so now I can see my video footage here. Um, I'm just gonna grab one of these clips. Uh, so another thing I should probably mention as well is just to get video footage from the internet. Now, reference footage is kind of a gray area as for terms as copyright goes. Um, basically, it's widely known that animators need reference footage YouTube and Vimeo and Getty Images are all great places to get reference footage from. However, because we're not actually selling the video and we're not duplicating it for our own purposes, um, you can download it and use it in your projects without having to worry about breaching copyright because as much as you are downloading it, um, someone else's work, you're using it as just a reference. So. Um, yeah, so don't worry about that. So if you are looking to download reference footage from Google, uh, from YouTube, just Google YouTube to MP4, and there's lots of different uh, alternatives out there for downloading reference. And so here's some clips I've grabbed from YouTube. Um, I'm just gonna drag one into the timeline and just make sure it's on frame one. Now, first off, you can see it's gone out of the screen. So to make that more visible, we can drag on this timeline here to zoom in and out. And we can also use our mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Um, if I use my middle mouse button to, and click, I can pan around much like I would with moving around here. Um, and then over here on the right hand side of the screen, this is quite important. This is your start and end frame. So this is what Blender will render out essentially or be viewing. So if I was to hear, come to the end of this and hit play, Damn it. you see how it just jumps back to the beginning again? And that's because that's set to 250 there. So um, what I'm gonna do first off is I'm gonna find a section of the video that um, I want to use for my door reference opening. So there's a clip here yeah, of him opening the door like this. I'm just gonna use this section here and now there's a few ways we can do this. Um, I can open up my tools menu. Uh, where is it? Uh, view, yeah, toolbar and tool settings. So I've got the toolbar here. So you've got a razor, 
blade there to cut the footage with and you've got your move tool there's also if you click and drag here you can change the start point and end point i quite like to do it this way rather than using the razor blade tool all the time um don't ask me why it's just a preference um and the same with the audio as well so try and make them match and there we go we've got our clip so we're just going to end it on around here now not being very accurate with this you can be much more accurate with this um, by zooming into the actual frame i'm just trying to get it so um it's a smaller clip to work with because the moment we've got is quite big and now i'm just going to grab both and move them over by left click left mouse clicking <clears throat> and now zoom in okay and you can see here that the frame lengths aren't actually the same so i'm just going to zoom right in and drag that out do the same there drag that out do the same there and then move over here now if i hit play cool i'm just going to delete the audio because we don't need audio for reference it's just a clip of video we're looking for um i'm also going to change the fr start frame to be this one because that's the first frame of the door opening and there it goes it stops does a little bit of a movement at the end there um cool and now let's oh, i'm adjusting the frame there let me undo that and bring that back to the start on frame one And I'm just going to cut it off here. Cool. So in total, looking at one second and 27 frames. I don't like the fact that the frames, the count at the top here is set in seconds as well, because we're trying to work in just frames. Um, but to do a little bit of checking. so. One of the things we can see here is our frame rate jumped to 30 frames per second. We actually wanted it at 24. If I now change that, you can see it all shifts around and nothing's where it should be anymore. If I drag this back over, I can't do anything with that. So <clears throat> if I undo that frame change, and I come back in, So we've got our footage back there. So one of the things to be very wary of, especially with animation, is your frame rate. So one of the things to be very wary of with frame range is in animation, we tend to work in 24 frames per second. Um, just to give you a bit of backstory with frames per second, um, 24 frames per second is NTSC. Power was 25 frames per second. Games, usually 30 or 60 frames per second. We're going to animate in 24 frames per second just because I'm saying that's the way we're doing it. Um, but yeah, so our reference footage is in 30 frames per second. So we will, we can either animate to 30 frames per second because we're working in a game engine, it, it won't really make that much difference. Um, or we can animate in 24 frames per second and do some calculations. So if I just grab a calculator. So there's a little trick you can do. So based on what frame number you're on, say I'm on frame seven. So if I was to go seven frames, I want to convert that to what it would be at 24 frames per second rate. I can do seven divided by 30 times by 24 equals 5.6 so that's what 24 frames per second would be is 5.6 frames um, just to kind of show you an example of that so if i went to 30 frames per second so on frame 30 which is one second i would go 30 divided by 30 times by 24 equals 24 that's going to be one second on both okay does that make sense cool so maths you never really escape it um yeah so carrying on 
So I've got some reference footage now. I'm going to uh, find what my last frame is. So it's one, one second and 27 frames. So that will be 57 frames. And there we go. We've got our last frame. No, oh, we've got an extra frame, have we? Yeah. 36 frames. Oh, yes, because we started in frame one. That's why. Cool. So we've got our timeline shrunk to the length of our clip. Now we're going to render out our clip so we can use it in Blender as reference footage. Now, the settings are generally set up um, in your favor for Blender. So one of the first things we want to do is go to the output and make sure we find a directory we're going to use. So I'm just going to throw this into my reference footage folder and then edited. I'm going to call this it underscore door and click accept. Now, I haven't put a format at the end there. And this is where it will do it for you, um, depending on what encoding you've got selected. So make sure you've got encoded dropped open. The file format at the moment that we're using is FFmpeg. Now, FFmpeg is a great codec for getting high quality and low compression rates um, and small file sizes. Now, we have got AVI RAW. Oh, God, don't ever use that, please. Um, AVI JPEG, and then you've got TIFF, PNG, and all the others there as image sequences. Um, now, I'm just going to render out an MPEG for first, just to show you kind of what we want to see. So uh, we've got our video codec, audio codec. It's not really that worry need to worry about because we're not using the audio. Um, you can turn it off. I just can't be bothered. I'm going to be lazy. And <clears throat> make sure your resolutions match up to what you're expecting. And then once you've got everything set here, um, I'm just going to come back to my format here and just add on the end, just because Linux users always have to make sure they input the format. Um, it's just a habit thing. And then once you've got everything set up there, go to render, render animation, and it will do this thing here where it will go through frame by frame by frame and render out your video. So we're looking for frame 56, that's done. And just give it a second while it does its thing. If I go to my edited folder, there you go, you can see it's all done. Just double check it's working. Um, my video player opened up on another screen. I'm just gonna bring that over here. So you can see now I've got my edited video clip. Ta-da! Um, which is great. Now, let's come out of the Blender render. <laughs> oh, that sounds fun to say. Um, and now we're gonna change it to uh, PNG sequence. Now, you can see here I've got MP4 still, so just make sure that you put PNG. And then if we scroll down, now we can see color management, but we can't see our encoding options there. So that's something to be aware of. Um, now I'm just gonna hit render again. And now we can see our image sequence is being created. However, because we didn't specify to Blender how to do the PNG sequence, you can see I've got .png 001, 00, so and so and so and so. Um, now, Blender may accept this, but it may not. Sometimes, depending on what software you're using, you have to make sure that you're following a specific naming convention with your numbering for image sequences. Um, so like if this was Maya, for example, it would expect a PNG dot and then the number. And that is how you can edit and create PNGs that are usable in Blender. In the next video, we're going to look at applying our reference footage to an image plane and then start animating our door. If you'd like to see the rest of this series, be sure to subscribe to the Patreon where you have exclusive access to the videos for anyone else and any assets that are usable in this project. A massive thank you to our subscribers and we'll see you on the next one. Hi everyone.